Hello everyone, my name is Paul Tchaikovsky. I'm a developer advocate at Pivotal Software. Today, I'm going to take you through deploying Spinnaker to Kubernetes and then creating a deployment pipeline with Spinnaker to deploy your applications to Kubernetes. I'll be using Pivotal Container Service for my Kubernetes clusters. I already have Pivotal Container Service running and I already have some clusters running in PKS. I have three clusters, a CICD cluster, where I'll be deploying Spinnaker itself, and I had a development cluster for the development version of my app, and the production cluster for the production version of my app. So let's go ahead and install Spinnaker. I'm using Helm to install Spinnaker, and it'll take about five minutes to uh, do the install. While that's happening, let's have a look at my application. I have a very simple Go-based Hello World app, and if you just run it without any settings, it will respond to you, Hello World to PKS by Spinnaker. I have a Docker file, which is a multi-stage Docker file. So it will use the Golang image to build my application. And then it will copy that built application into the Alpine image and run it from there. And that way I get a very small runtime image. I have this Git repo connected up to my Docker registry with an automated build. And so anytime a new branch is pushed to master, or a new tag is created, it will build new images. Now let's flip back to our Helm install and see how that's going. You can see the Helm install is still running. We can have a look at what's going on by right? switching to a new terminal and listing all of our pods. So you can see we have a number of pods and jobs and services running. Let's have a look at this installed pod, which is actually configuring Halyard to install Spinnaker for us. Here we can see our Spinnaker install happening. And because we tailed the logs, we'll watch it in real time. And when the install is finished, the pod will stop and it will drop me back to my command prompt. You can see the install is now finished. We can look at what pods are running and see what changes have happened. You can see there's now a lot more pods running. Let's go back to our Helm prompt. You can see Helm has finished installing Spinnaker and it's given us some instructions on how we can access. I've written some aliases to help me do this. So I can just run deck. And it will forward my port 9000 to Spinnaker. So I can switch straight across to a browser and start using Spinnaker. Now there's not much going on with Spinnaker right now because we haven't got any applications attached to it. Let's go ahead and create an application. Spinnaker wants to know where your application source code is. So we can point it at our GitHub repo. So we now have an application created, but we don't actually have an application running. In Spinnaker, an application is a group of resources that Spinnaker manages in your cloud provider, in this case, Kubernetes. Inside of an application, you can have clusters, load balancers, and firewalls. Clusters are running versions of your application, and they're made up of server groups. Load balancers are exactly what they say they are, and so are firewalls. So let's go ahead and create a cluster for our application. Now we're going to deploy this to our development Kubernetes cluster where we have a development namespace. And we're going to give this a stack name of dev. You can see our server group will therefore be called hello dev. We'll then pick our container. We'll use the hello spinnaker latest. And then we'll go down to our container settings. Here we simply need to set a container port, which is 8080. And then we want to create a readiness probe. And we're going to tell that to listen to port 8080 as well and then we hit create. We're gonna watch as Spinnaker creates our application. It's finished creating our server group, so we can hit close. And you can see here now, we have a server group called Hello Dev. And it shows us having one pod that's up. Let's switch across to our command prompt and have a look at it. So you can see Spinnaker has created a replica set with one pod in it but it hasn't created any services. And that's because we haven't created any load balances in Spinnaker yet. But we can access our pod by doing a port forward. And you can see with the port forward, we can see our pod and it's saying, hello world, deploy to PKS by Spinnaker. Exactly what we expected to do based on the source code. So we now know that we can deploy our application to Kubernetes using Spinnaker, but that's not really doing much that I couldn't do with a couple of kubectl commands. So we're going to explore pipelines, and that's where Spinnaker really shines. But before we do that, we'll create a few load balancers. 
we're going to create a load balancer for dev and a load balancer for prod. And we're going to set its type to load balancer, and that way it will be accessible from outside of the Kubernetes cluster. We'll create another one for production. You can see Spinnaker now has both load balancers running. Now let's switch to pipeline and build out our deployment pipeline. Just call it deploy hello world. The first thing we need to do is set a trigger so that the pipeline knows when to run. We'll use the Docker registry as the trigger. And we point that at our hello world image. And when we hit save here, this will tell our pipeline to trigger any time there is a new image pushed to Docker Hub. Now with the trigger configured, we can add stages. First, we're going to create a deployment stage called deploy to development. And we hit add server group. And we can copy the server group from our existing one. We just need to change a few settings. First of all, we need a different container. So we kill that. And you can see we now have an images from triggers. We click that one. This tells a pipeline to use the tag of the image just pushed to the Docker registry. Next, we give it a strategy. We're going to give it the Highlander strategy, which destroys all previous server groups when the new server group is up and healthy. We're going to choose our development load balancer, and we're going to set a container port and a readiness probe. Now we want to publish all the way to production but we want a chance to test the application before we do. Ordinarily, I would put some testing steps in. Instead, I'm just going to ask for a human interaction. And then finally, we'll add a deploy to production stage. Again, we're going to copy from our existing server group. We want to change to our production Kubernetes cluster. And like before, we pick the image from triggers. We choose our production load balancer. And we're going to choose to have three replicas because this is production. And then we add our container port and a readiness probe. So you can see we now have our deploy hello world pipeline set up. We can go back to our application and create a new release and that will fire off a new Docker build. So we just edited the Hello World application and then released it. In the Docker registry, we now have a new build queued for release 1.3. The Docker image finished building and that triggered my pipeline to start. So we can click on our first stage deploy to dev and watch our status. You can see our deploy to dev stage has finished running and it's now at the manual judgment and it's asking me if I want to deploy to production. Before I hit continue, I want to actually make sure my application is working. If we go back to our clusters screen, you can see our application has now been deployed by the pipeline to development. You can see the release 1.3 matches up, and you can see that there's a load balancer attached to it. So we can actually scroll down and find the IP address for the load balancer and load it up. And you can see our application is running. And you can see our latest change, adding the word live, is on there as expected. And that's good enough for me. So let's go ahead and say yes to deploying to production. So now Spinnaker is into the third step, the deploy to production step. 
and the deploy to production stage has finished. And that means our pipeline has run through correctly. So let's switch back to our clusters. And if we refresh this, we'll now see a production cluster as well as a development cluster. Again, it's a load, it's load balance. And you can see we have three pods that are up instead of one because we asked for three replicas. So let's click through on the load balancer and make sure our production app is running. And it is. So you can see now we have production and development both running and both at the same version. That's the end of today's demo. To recap, we deployed Spinnaker into a Kubernetes cluster, and then we used Spinnaker to deploy our application into a development cluster. And then we built a pipeline to take our application all the way from source through to being built, through development, and then finally to production. 